It's time for State of War 2024. Nominations for Lok Sabha polls. We never expected this flood. The flood which happened once in 75 years. The Prime Minister didn't even come once to Chennai. He has come for other programs, inauguration programs. He comes and says, "So I say, wanna come to Chennai?" But he has no love for Tamil Nadu. We are very clear that people will bless us on April 19, and June 4 will clearly say that Tamil Nadu and Coimbatore. Everywhere, people people are with Narendra Modi. Good evening. You're watching 6 p.m. Prime here on India Today. I'm Akshita Nanda Gopal. The countdown is on to face one of the elections. 102 seats up for grabs come April 19th. Today was the last day to file nominations, so I'll be getting you all of those updates with our focus, particularly on the state of Tamil Nadu that goes to polls on April 19th. So the Indian Political League coming your way over the next 40 minutes, and then it's over to Nikhil Nas for the Indian Premier League. Political temperatures are soaring. But there's also a whole lot of cricketing action. Nikhil, what do you have for us today? Well, Akshita, I know the political discourse is dominated by the state of Tamil Nadu, and what we're going to be doing in the Indian Premier League, we're going to be focusing on that very state. I'm going to talk about two teams that have a connection with Tamil Nadu. One, of course, you know, Chennai Super Kings. The other is Gujarat Titans because they have plenty of players from that state. But the star, as you all know. is thala himself ms dhoni they call it the dad's army but even at the age of 42 he's defying gravity more on that coming your way at 6:40 pm okay we should technically be wearing yellow through this show but thanks very much nikhil 6:30 you can catch all the latest on the indian premier league let's for the moment focus on the indian political league let's begin with the news Congress ticket Natika erupts Karnataka mantris at war over Kolar ticket three Congress MLAs threaten to resign Chief Minister Sidramaiya admits that yes there's a fight within the party ranks Fishers erupt in Maharashtra's Agadi camp Congress and Uddhav Sena spar over three seats Sharad Pawar's NCP faction to declare seats separately Arvind Kejriwal moves Delhi High Court to quash ED arrest. Mrs. Kejriwal reads out an emotional message from the CM in lockup. Says no money recovered in liquor gate yet. Double jolt for the Aam Aadmi Party in Punjab. Aap's lone MP from Jalandhar, Sushil Kumar Rinku joins BJP. Aap Jalandhar MLA also joins the BJP. Aap Kader protest. Election Commission cracks the whip on sexist Neta. Sources say the poll body has sent a show cause notice to Supriya Srinath for her Kangana sexist slur and to BJP's Dilip Ghosh for his Mamta father comment. And India condemns US's remark on Kejriwal's arrest, calling for a fair, transparent trial. US acting on voice summoned. India says America must respect our sovereignty. The countdown is well and truly on for state of war because in just a few weeks from now in just about 20 days you're going to have phase one of the elections kicking off on April 19th and today at 3 p.m. was the last time to go ahead and file nominations for phase one of the Lok Sabha elections 102 seats up for grabs both the India Bloc and the NDA have gone ahead and fielded all of their candidates there are of course a few more days to withdraw nominations so will we see any last minute surprise 
crisis is the question. But today, you saw some of the big wigs who will be facing the election test on April 19th filing their nomination. K. Anamalai, who's fighting from Coimbatore, filed his nomination today. Nitin Gadkari in Nagpur, Dayanidhi Marin in Chennai Central, all of them filed their nominations. Let's round up for you all the political action of the day. And then we'll talk about all the seats you need to watch out for on April 19th. The deadline to file nominations for phase one of the Lok Sabha elections is over. <laughs> Tamil Nadu BJP chief K. Anamalai filed his nomination from Coimbatore. Before filing nominations, he offered prayers at the Arulmigu Koniamman temple. Anamalai also held a roadshow with senior BJP leader and MLA Vanati Srinivasan. The mood is very clear. The people of Coimbatore parliamentary constituency are with us. We are very clear that people will bless us on April 19. And June 4 will clearly say that Tamil Nadu and Coimbatore, everywhere people, people are with Narendra Modi. Former Union Minister and DMK MP Dayanidhi Marin filed his nomination from Chennai Central. The Prime Minister didn't even come once to Chennai. He has come for other programs, inauguration programs. He comes and says, so I say, wanna come to Chennai, but he has no love for Tamil Nadu. Probably he can read good from the uh, 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 teleprompters, but he's not able to read the minds of hearts of people of Tamil Nadu. He's facing Vinod Selvam from the BJP and B. Parthasati from the DNTK. Another DMK candidate, Tamarachi Tangapandian, filed her nomination from Chennai South on Tuesday. She held a public rally today where cranes were used to shower flowers and garlands on her. Tangapandian is facing BJP's Tamarisai Sandarajan, who recently resigned as Telangana governor to take the poll plunge. In Maharashtra, Nitin Gadkari filed his nomination from Nagpur. Before filing his papers, he held a roadshow accompanied by Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis. The fates of candidates who filed nominations in the first phase will be decided on April 19th. Bureau report, India Today. So let's talk about some of the big political fights to watch out for on April 19th. And largely it's concentrated in the state of Tamil Nadu because remember Tamil Nadu has a one-phase election. The whole state goes to polls on April 19th in phase one. So in Tamil Nadu, the seats to watch out for. Chennai South is going to see an interesting battle between two women, Tamarachi Tangapandian, who is the DMK candidate, the current sitting MP in Chennai South, versus Tamarisai Sandar Rajan, the BJP candidate who was until recently the Telangana governor. Interestingly, the AIADMK has Dr. Jayavardhan, who's been fielded there. Former minister, Jay Kumar son. Now let's talk about Chennai Central. There you have Dayanadi Marin, who is uh, in fact fighting there. He's just filed his nomination today. He is, of course, the incumbent MP from Chennai Central. It's his bastion. And squaring off against him is from the BJP, Vinoj P. Selvam, who's making his debut with this particular election. And then the DMDK has failed at Parthasarthi. Remember, the AIA DMK gave the seat to the DMDK. In Coimbatore, this is of course a fight everyone's been talking about. You have, in fact, Ganapati Rajkumar, DMK candidate, former mayor of Coimbatore, a turncoat from the AIA DMK versus Anamalai versus Singai Ramachandran. So it's a three-way fight essentially that's playing out right now in Coimbatore. And one that's going to be very challenging for all candidates. In Tutukudi, you have Kanimuri, who is the DMK candidate, and the BJP also fielding a strongman. Nenar, of course, was initially in Tutukudi. He's been moved to Trinalveli, so we'll just fix that for you. Let's move on to the next seat as well. Nagpur of Maharashtra. Nitin Gadkari has been, of course, fielded. This is his stronghold. He's seeking a third term from Nagpur. The Congress has fielded Vikas Takwe. So these are the names you need to be aware of. The fights that everyone is watching out for.
Let's focus now on Coimbatore. Today you had Anna Malay, the Tamil Nadu BJP chief, filing his nomination. Shilpa Nair is joining us live from Coimbatore. Shilpa, this is a seat everyone's looking at, not just in Tamil Nadu, but nationally as well. Because the BJP's dreams of really making inroads in Tamil Nadu will start with Coimbatore. They've bet big on Anna Malay. So he'll have to prove his worth essentially. And it's not going to be a cakewalk. You've got strong candidates being fielded by the DMK and the AIA DMK as well. Well, absolutely, Akshita. In fact, it's definitely not a cakewalk uh, for the BJP, uh, though this is one seat where they're pinning all their hop hopes on because uh, Coimbatore, of course, you know, it's a region where the BJP has a significant presence and with Anna Malay's uh, popularity on ground, uh, they believe they can, of course, you know, improve their performance this time around. They believe that they have a strong chance in Coimbatore and that's the reason why they took this whole gamble of fielding their top phase, uh, their, seen, uh, their uh, most popular phase from a constant like Coimbatore, uh, the BJP well realizes that it's a high stake battle because in Coimbatore it's a three cornered fight here. It is a three cornered fight between the BJP, the DMK, and the AIDMK. And traditionally, Coimbatore has been considered to be a stronghold of the AIDMK. And in this election, the DMK ensured that the Coimbatore seat remains with them. Uh, in the 2019 elections, DMK had allotted the seat to the CPIM, which is an alliance partner of the DMK. And uh, uh, the CPIM had won in 2019. But in 2024, the DMK anticipated the move of the BJP that they could field Adamale from Coimbatore. And for that reason, the DMK ensured that the seat remains with them and they of course have fielded uh, Ganapati Rajkumar who is a former mayor of Coimbatore. Yeah. He, he was with the ADMK before but he had switched over uh, to the DMK a few years back. So clearly uh, the BJP well realizes a high stake battle but they are I ready know, it's to a high stake all. battle perhaps Shilpa, not just for the BJP but also for the DMK and AIA DMK from what you're telling us they also fielded powerhouses in this particular seat. I just want to also take our viewers through this report that explains the Coimbatore battle for them. Breaking down the three candidates, uh, what are really the issues that come to the fore in Coimbatore, what has been the voting pattern previously, all of that and much more in this explainer that I recorded and filed earlier. The Bharatiya Janata Party has decided to field its Tamil Nadu president K. Annamalai from Coimbatore for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Now it is being said that the BJP's national leadership, which insisted that Anamalai should contest from Coimbatore, even though he was actually a bit reluctant. But the choice of Coimbatore is for Anamalai is interesting and also extremely significant. Hello and welcome to India Today, So South. Dominated by the Dravidian majors of the DMK and AIA DMK, Tamil Nadu is seeing fresh competition this time from the BJP. And at the heart of it, as is evident, is K. Anamalai, a former IPS officer who seems to be quickly establishing himself as a significant political player in the state. I'm going to be bringing you the reasons behind why Coimbatore and the Western Belt in Tamil Nadu occupies a central space in BJP's Tamil Nadu push, while also looking at the DMK and the AIA DMK candidates and the caste calculations in Coimbatore. Now, there are three candidates who are fighting it out in Coimbatore. It's a battle between Annamalai, the BJP Tamil Nadu chief, Singai Ramachandran, the IT wing head of the AIA DMK, and Ganapati B. Rajkumar of the DMK. He was a former mayor of Coimbatore, which is also, of course, known as Kovai locally. Before we get into really which candidate stands a better chance and why, let's first take a look at the demography and the voting patterns in Coimbatore, which perhaps could tell you what's going to happen this time. Now, for more than four decades, the Western Belt of Tamil Nadu, it's very popularly called as Kungu Nadu or Kungu Mandalam in Tamil, has without doubt been a bastion of the AIA DMK. It's played a significant role in who sits really at the throne of Fort St. George. I'm referring to Chennai, the seat of power of the Tamil Nadu government. Traditionally, the Gounders, who occupy a significant percentage of the population here and other castes have always put their weight behind the AIA DMK. The Kongu Belt, which is in West Tamil Nadu, has traditionally been with the AIA DMK and more than half of the AIA DMK tally of 66 legislators in Tamil Nadu in 2021 came from this region. So it tells you how strong and powerful they are here. But the influence of the AIA DMK in this Kongu Nadu does seem to be weaning. The DMK and its alliance partners won all eight Lok Sabha seats in the 2019 general elections from this area. In Coimbatore, in the 2019 general elections, it was CPIM candidate 
PR Natarajan, who won by a massive victory margin of nearly 1.8 lakh votes, overall securing 5 lakh 71 thousand votes. Natarajan had defeated CP Radhakrishnan of the BJP, who finished second with 3 lakh 92 thousand plus votes. What's also worth noting here is that Coimbatore constituency witnessed a 64% voter turnout in the 2019 Lok Sabha polls. It's a communally sensitive constituency. It's helped the BJP therefore cultivate a strong Hindu vote bank, which is not necessarily the case across Tamil Nadu. Coimbatore, importantly, is also home to a large North Indian workforce that's employed in the textile mills, think Tirupur. So all of this makes BJP believe that they have a strong chance in this particular seat. Now, by fielding Anamale, the BJP has taken that first step towards social engineering in a state where it's hardly got any presence, albeit for now. The BJP, therefore, is banking heavily on Anamale and him doing well in Coimbatore, particularly because he hails from the dominant community, the Gounders, as I mentioned earlier. The BJP feels that this predominantly business community has a kind of soft corner for them and will be looking for at least a section of their votes going towards the Saffron Party, thereby splitting the AIA DMK's vote bank. The BJP also hopes that Anamalai's clean image, his impressive record as a police officer, would help to kind of strike a chord with youngsters in the constituency. He's been going viral, of course, for all the statements and his attacks at the DMK. Now, Anamalai's success or failure will play a massive role in BJP's grand plans for Tamil Nadu, where they're attempting to completely cut off the Dravidian baseline. And they're looking at a long-term plan here in which Anna Malai plays a key, key role. Now, let's talk about the DMK's candidate. The DMK is definitely not taking things lightly this time around. It's leaving no stone unturned to ensure Anna Malai's defeat because they know a win for Anna Malai will kind of send across a message that the BJP is making in rules. And it's quite interesting to note that the ruling DMK, which sees this as a prestige battle, chose this time not to give the Coimbatore seat, which is known as the hub of Western Tamil Nadu, to any of its allies. Usually, this seat goes to the left. The DMK this time said, no, we're going to fight. And that's why I chose the candidate of Ganapati, keeping in mind that the DMK is contesting from here after 10 whole years. So former city mayor Ganapati P. Rajkumar is being fielded. Important to note here, he was once with the AIA DMK. So he's kind of being brought back from political hibernation to contest from Coimbatore. Now, the death of Jay Lalita played a significant role in Rajkumar actually switching sides to the DMK in 2020. He was with the AIA DMK when he was elected as Coimbatore mayor. So this is, as I said, him coming out of political hibernation. So who has the AIA DMK fielded? They fielded a very interesting candidate too, Singai G. Ramachandran, head of the party's IT wing. He's going to be fighting in Coimbatore. Ramachandran was actually expelled from the party and this was when the whole EPS-OPS battle was happening. He had chosen to side with O. Panir Selvam following Jaila Lita's death. However, he was later reinstated to the IT wing after the two factions merged. The AIA DMK also will be counting more or less on the same factor as the BJP which is their stronghold of the Gounder community. Why do the Gounders choose the AIA DMK repeatedly? Because it's the caste that Erepadi Parni Swami also belongs to. So there you have it. The electoral battle in Coimbatore will be one of the biggest and most watched contests, not just in Tamil Nadu, but across the country. So that's all that you need to know about the big Coimbatore battle. The other seats to watch out for in Tamil Nadu are largely in Chennai. Chennai South, Chennai Central are going to be very interesting constituencies, very interesting fights. I want to play out now a conversation that my colleague Pramod Madhav had exclusively with Chennai Central candidate, the incumbent MP, Dayanidhi Madhav. So the democratic festival of... Elections 2024 has begun and the most popular candidate for Central Chennai, Dhanidhi Maran, has started his campaign in Chennai. That is Dhanidhi Maran. Sir, congratulations on your nomination. How, what do you have to say about the crowd that has come to see you here? See, uh, always people of Central Chennai have tremendous love for DMK and for, uh, and for me. And every time they come out in such forces to show their support for DMK and to my leader, MK Stalin and show that this will convert into votes. You have already been an MP for Central Chennai. So what is it you, you can bring to Central Chennai once you've been elected? See, at this moment, we want the Indian Alliance wants to save India from BJP. 
we want to make sure that we have a secular, secular government in there, in, in the country. Right now, BJP is ensured that the people are at to suffer and we are trying to fight, we are trying to unite the country to fight back for secularism. What do you have to say about Anna Malay and others' nomination in Coimbatore? They claim that BJP will make inroads into uh, Tamil Nadu this time. Modi can come 100 times, but BJP will never surpass Nota. Thank you so much. That was Dhani Dimaran, who is actually started the campaign over here, and the public are swarming him in North Chennai. Zivian, Pramod Madhav for India Today. Let's take this across to Pramod Madhav for more details. He's been getting you all the big candidates who are in the poll free in Chennai. Pramod, the urban pocket, the urban headquarters of Tamil Nadu is going to be very, very closely watched. And there are some very interesting battles also that are going to play out. It's not just the BJP factor, but even the DMK that's put up their strongest faces there to ensure that they retain many of their Chennai strongholds. It absolutely is, Akshita. We have North, Central and South Chennai and for North, it, like all three are with DMK presently. Kalanidhi Virasamy, Dharanidhi Maran and Tamil Chitanka Pandian. Interestingly, in Tamil, uh, South Chennai, this time it's going to be Tamil versus Tamil. Tamil Chitanka Pandian from DMK is going to compete against uh, Tamil Sri Soundarajan, the former governor uh, from BJP. And Jay Vardhan, AIDMK candidate is going to be there. In Central Chennai, it is Dharanidhi Maran. We also have AIDMK uh, a candidate and also BJP's Vinoj P. Selvam is also contesting from here. And similarly, North North Chennai was the one that actually made into news yesterday because of the way literally the boys behaved in the election office yesterday where just because of a tussle over a token issuance that it turned into a huge issue between DMK yeah. and AIADMK and finally it got resolved. So all kind of like action is expected in, Ch not in Chennai itself, uh, Akshita. It'll be interesting to see what really plays out in Chennai. It's a high-stakes battle. There's no doubt about that. Thanks very much, Pramod, for joining us with all of those details. Now, how many OPSs are too many? It's OPS versus OPS versus OPS versus OPS versus another OPS. I hope I got that numbering right. But essentially, there are five O Panir Selvams in the poll fray in one seat in Tamil Nadu's Ramanathapuram. This is a hilarious name game that's playing out. A total of five candidates have now come forward, filed their nominations in the same name. But it's also led to a rather serious question, whether this is a conspiracy to ensure that votes are split and don't go in favor of O. Panisalvam, the former chief minister, or whether it's all just his bad luck, whether it's just a coincidence. OPS 1, OPS 2, OPS 3, OPS 4, OPS 5. That's right. It's OPS versus OPS versus OPS versus OPS versus OPS in Ramanathapuram constituency in Tamil Nadu. It's a scene right out of a movie. A total of five people, including former Chief Minister O. Panir Selvam, with the exact same name, the same initials, O. Panir Selvam, have filed nominations as independent candidates from Ramanathapuram constituency. <laughs> And each of them are fighting his independence, including former CM OPS after he lost the symbol battle in the courts. So add to the chaos over election symbol. He's now facing an identity crisis too in his constituency. For voters in Ramanathapuram, they're going to have to pick from an ocean of OPSs. Bureau Report, India Today. So is there a BJP factor in the upcoming elections in Tamil Nadu? The BJP most certainly hopes so. They're trying to make inroads. But what's very clear, whether they do manage to get votes or not, is that the political discourse is now centered around the BJP. Why do I say this? The DMK and the AIA DMK have been resorting to somewhat hilarious political fight over, believe it or not, who's smiling more in pictures with the Prime Minister. It started with Edapadi Parniswamy showing pictures of Udaynidhi Stalin. Udaynidhi Stalin then hit back showing pictures of EPS saying, look, he's uh, giving a smile, flashing all of his teeth, whereas we are not. That is what's playing out right now in multiple rallies of the DMK and the AIA DMK.
who's closer to Prime Minister Modi? That's what got the DMK and AIA DMK fighting it out in Tamil Nadu. It all started with AIA DMK chief Edapadi Palanisamy mocking Udayanidhi Stalin over his Ames Madurai attack at the BJP. And almost immediately in his retort, Udayanidhi dragged in the Prime Minister and questioned why EPS was beaming and standing with Prime Minister Modi. EPS, who was taunted for showing his teeth and smiling, yes, that's what they are fighting about, immediately put out pictures of Stalin and Udyanidhi also smiling and flashing their teeth. So the fight has descended to who's looking happier when with the Prime Minister to claim its proof of a secret alliance. But wait, it doesn't just end there. Udyanadi countered EPS again, this time with pictures of EPS falling at Sasikala's feet. <laughs> The DMK has now gone to town with this video of EPS falling on Sasikala's feet when he was named as the Chief Minister. Well, whether the BJP has any impact in Tamil Nadu this election or not, Prime Minister Modi, one way or another, seems to be dominating the election discourse. Bureau Report, India Today. Here on the Indian Political League, let's get you all the latest with regards to the nominations that were filed today, last day for Phase 1. And in Maharashtra, with several seats going into polls on uh, April 19th, one of them is the seat of Nagpur. And I'd like to bring in Rithvik Balikar on this broadcast. Rithvik, we saw earlier today Nitin Gadkari holding a mega road show and then going ahead and filing his nomination. He's seeking a third term. And there was endless speculation on whether he'd be given a ticket in the seat of his choice or not. That has been clearly ironed out. And this is his stronghold. So it should be an easy battle for Gadkari. Uh, absolutely, uh, Akshita, we can see that uh, it is uh, an easy battle, but uh, Nagpur being a VVIP seat uh, because uh, Vivek Thakre is uh, being contested from Congress against Nitin Gadkari and another uh, important seat from Vidarbha in the first phase which uh, the nominations has been filed is Ramtek. Uh, MLA from Congress has left Congress and joined Eknath Shinde's Shiv Sena and he has filed nomination from Shiv Sena from Ramtek against uh, uh, the Congress candidates. So, uh, Gadchiroli Chimur and then uh, Chandrapur are uh, the other two seats uh, from the first phase from where uh, Sudhir Mungantiwar, minister and the core committee okay. member of BJP state leadership has filed nominations today. So, uh, the first phase uh, we saw that how BJP did a show of strength uh, as Nitin Gadkari was seen uh, in a road show and uh, all the CM, DCM had accompanied him and showed uh, Mahayuti uh, led Grand Alliance in full strength there. All right, we'll track what happens in Maharashtra as well come April 19. Thanks very much, Ritwik, for joining us with all of those details. Nagpur is a seat, a high-profile one that everyone will be watching out for.